I'm seeing more and more people talk about how crypto is not going to make it through what just happened with FTX. I'm hearing more and more people saying that the market won't return anything for the next 10 years. However, uh, I just want to I want to make this video and talk about the future and talk about what's happened this year as well because I want to give a pat on the back to everyone that's made it through this market because this has been probably the worst market of our lifetimes. I don't know if this is technically worse than 2008. Of course, there are def definitely a lot of differences, but we've had the highest inflation in 40 years. Terrible inflation, people being squeezed at gas pumps, food, uh, everything. Cars, 50% more expensive. Housing, 50% more expensive. Uh, we had raising rates, which makes everything even more expensive because it's harder and harder to get debt. We had a war that broke out between Ukraine and Russia, which no one really planned for. They thought that it wasn't going to happen. And then it also caused an energy crisis in a lot of the European countries. A lot of, a lot of countries don't really have independence uh, in terms of energy. So they hadn't planned for anything like this. They weren't expecting energy rates to go up hundreds of percent. We had the worst start to the S&P 500 in 52 years, uh, with it down, what, 25 or 30 percent in six months, and some of the worst months that we've ever seen. This It was more significant than 2008 in terms of how quickly we fell in that same period of time. And we'll get to crypto in, here in a second, but this is just the backdrop. We had Anchor and Luna collapse. So we had a asset that was worth about 60 billion between the two of them uh, fall down to zero, basically zero. <laughs> and we had a bank run and that caused contagion between that going into Voyager, which had assets with three arrows capital uh, that basically sunk three arrows capital that caused Celsius to collapse. We have FTX now collapsing, and this all was just domino after domino after domino. Um, we have so many other exchanges collapsing at the same time. This has caused a lot of fear in crypto specifically. Now, I'm sure there's other stuff that I'm not even covering here. Let me know in the comment section if there's something that I'm forgetting, because there were so many big bad events that happened this year. But I think it really reinforced some fundamental principles into us, some good investing habits. First of all, dollar cost averaging is key. So many people just throw money at the market. Maybe they get a bonus and they just throw it all into the market. And the last couple of years, that made sense. That actually made you more money. If you could get money in faster into the market, you would make more money. It was just such an easy thing to invest into the stock market and the crypto market in 2020 and 2021. But now we're practicing better investing principles. You should take profits. I think a lot of us didn't really consider doing that too much in 2021 just because it seemed like the market was going to keep on jumping up and people were making money left and right. So you didn't really want to take profits because you could lose out on 20% in a day or something like that. Uh, and it seemed like the market was just going to continue to race up. And yeah, there's something brewing in the background with inflation, but that was going to be fine. At least that's what a lot of people thought. The market doesn't always go up. And a lot of us know that, but it was so easy to feel like whatever you put money in, in 2021 was going to go up or 2020. It was just going to go up 100%, 200%, 30% in a day. And I think it's important to remember that that's not the case. And if we feel like that, it's probably a good time to pull some money out of the market. And then also we need to be uh, we need to be skeptical about different platforms, different companies, whether it's something like um like the car company, the electric car company that basically was just rolling uh, trucks down the road, down a hill, so that way it looked like they were actually in motion. Nikola falling down 95% or whatever it's down right now, or whether it is you know a, a platform that gives you 20% on stablecoin, or whether it is a platform that's spending money left and right, and it looks like they're making money in every which way, and everything just sounds a little bit too good to be true with FTX. Uh, we just need to be more skeptical and then also self-sovereign in terms of at least Bitcoin, but probably crypto in general. So with that in mind, those are the principles that I think we learned this year. Now, I don't think that 
crypto's done by any means. I don't think the stock market's done. Uh, from what we know in history, the market always returns stronger. Now, not every single stock is around. You want to get in good companies at good valuations, and you want to make sure that they have a large moat and that they will continue to be here. And if you do that, then typically if you dollar cost average and buy through t uh, difficult times, it makes it uh, easier to make more money in the future. These assets typically continue to appreciate. So if you can buy into these companies or these cryptocurrencies, typically that's a good thing. If you can buy them at a discount, that's really good. And we have had nothing but discounts this year. Now, that doesn't mean that we were always fairly valued, but I think it does mean that if you dollar cost average, you will be happy five or 10 years from now that you did just that. You won't be looking back thinking, I probably should have held more cash in 2022 and 2023 and just kind of let it sit around. No, you want to deploy money into the markets. Now, you want to do that consistently and you don't want to go all in, but you do want to deploy money. And that's something that I even have a hard time with, even uh, because I want to keep a cash buffer in case there's some kind of real estate deal or in case of something else, the market crashes more. I have to continuously tell myself, no, nope, I need to put money into the market. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to put in, uh, you know, let's say I have $500. That doesn't mean I'm going to put in $200 this week and $200 next week and then $100 a week after and then I'm done, right? I want to spread that out. So, I continue to buy in. Now, crypto specifically, we're down significantly on Bitcoin, right? We're down 77%, something like that, 78%. That's less than we typically see in a bear market. That doesn't mean that we uh, that we won't go further. That doesn't mean that we have to go further. That is just what's happened in the past. Now, just because of FTX collapsing, I don't think that necessarily destroys crypto forever. I think it definitely destroys some trust, but we've seen that many times in crypto with Mt. Gox, with other centralized or decentralized uh, platforms. You have to realize anyone can go down, and that's why you want to be self-sovereign. You want to hold on to your own keys, and that's hard to remember when there's so much money to be made with all the different platforms, uh, but I think we will have an easier time remembering that in the future, and maybe it's just one of those things where, yeah, you still want to try out a platform, you need to get money on exchanges to be able to exchange, but then you take the majority off, like 99%, 98%, something like that. And then you keep your ear kind of close uh, to the ground to see if there's any rumblings of the exchange that you use uh, having some problems. And that's pretty much what we've been doing all year round. Uh, all this year, we've had to be listening for that. And it is harder when we're in a bear market. There are more collapses, and I wouldn't be surprised to hear more collapses moving forward, more platforms having a difficult time. But when you're self-sovereign, when you hold your own keys, you just sleep much better. So that's going to be something to pay attention to in the future. But I think this really makes the case for why we need Bitcoin, because any centralized exchange, any government, uh, any civilization can fall. But that's why you want a backup with digital currency that can help you uh, kind of navigate those times and be able to have a currency that everyone can be part of. Now, let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. Give yourself, uh, I don't want to say give yourself a pat on the back. That sounds, I don't know, it just doesn't sound right. But uh, I would be proud if you are still watching these videos, if you're still trying to invest and you're still investing. A lot of people have stepped away and won't come back in until uh, the next bull market. And it will be too late at that point and they'll buy at the top and then sell at the bottom again. So be proud if you are still here. Be proud if you are still you know, putting money into the market and trying to learn and get better. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.